How did it feel to, to watch Black Panther and hear your song playing? Well, you know, the movie comes on and the very first thing you hear is Too Short. And the, the song was? In the trunk. In the trunk, right. I mean, I get the gist of it because, you know, the director's from Oakland. That probably was, he was about that age mm -hmm. when that song was out and he's like, I'm a, he, wrote, he wrote some personal shit in there. And he wrote the he wrote the city in the in the, just because that's where he's from. Like he he found a way to make to, Oakland to put Oakland into, Black into the Black Panther story. Yeah, that, right. was, <laughs> that was dope. So yeah, that is. And what else, what are you, what are you gonna do? You start with a two short song. You know what I'm saying? So I uh, I was told I had a song in the movie, but I wasn't told it was the first song. Mm. I was very shocked when I saw it, and that's one of the um, those moments where you know. You know, that song, luckily, because a few of my songs have been samples, but in a moment like that, he picked a song that was an original. Mm. So that was like, thank you. So you own the publishing and everything in that song? That's our, yeah, of course. We wrote the music, me, uh, Shorty B, uh, probably Ant Banks, I don't know who I was in on it. So that was a nice check. It, it, it comes in, you know, it comes in the, in the whole thing. Yeah. You, know, but, you don't just don't get a check, like Black Panther sent you a check. Just, oh, there's not like an upfront for them even using it. It, it come. No, I didn't. I didn't get an upfront. Okay. But I well, would you want it? You I just mean, want to be in. You just want to be in the arena, bro. You know, I feel you. And and, and at the end of the day, it's like that they probably was, paid a licensing fee to get it or yeah, all that shit. But still, I, that's all, what I'm saying. The beautiful part is we wrote that music. Yeah, and the publishing. So that's that's a beautiful thing. And and you know, Black Panther was the biggest budget black movie ever, right? If you really think about it. The biggest probably, budget black movie of the all biggest, time. Biggest grossing too. Yeah, and biggest grossing, mm -hmm. and you know, and then like, it was the first movie to be played in Saudi Arabia in like twenty years or something like that. Damn. You, you heard about know, that? Didn't know all that. You can't play movies in Saudi Arabia. It's like outlawed. Black and they, Panther. and they broke that rule to play Black Panther. That was the first film they played in movie theaters, in it's decades. Dope. It's dope. And they got to hear too short. Why do they have theaters? <laughs> you didn't I watch don't know. movies. I don't know. Propaganda, maybe? <laughs> like, what's in the theaters? I don't know. That's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. You and Pimp C were close. Very close. Very close. Mm -hmm. um, I interviewed uh, Bun B recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told the story about how uh, Tupac almost, you know, almost stopped Pimp C from doing uh, Big Pimping. Tupac was already dead at that time, right? So Pimp okay, used yeah. to, in 2000, Pimp, uh, Tupac was dead. Pimp used to have a picture on his wall of Tupac. And whenever you would ask him something that required deep thought, he would look at the picture. And it would be like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm asking Pac what he think. He was very, very aligned in with the personality of Tupac, not really the musician, but the character of Tupac, the personality and how he carried himself as a man in the world and in the culture. And if it was something that Pimp thought that Tupac wouldn't do, Pimp wouldn't do it. Well, I do remember him saying, my ears hearing Pimp C say, I ain't fuck with nobody that didn't fuck with Tupac. So that was his, one of his reasons why he wasn't gonna do the record with, with Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. He's like, he ain't fuck with Tupac, I don't fuck with him. Like he just, that was a rule, huh. period. Yeah, I mean, Bun B basically said that that was like one of the only times he saw Pimp compromise about his principles because he didn't really, he did not want to do the song, and Bun got him to do eight bars basically. Yeah, I mean, I I personally delivered Pimp C to the video shoot. Like, if you <laughs> if you look at the video shoot, there's okay. a scene, a lot of scenes in the video where they're at this carnival. I think they were in Trinidad or something. Yeah. Pimp C didn't make it to the airport or whatever the fuck. He didn't go. Bun B is in that part. And then there's another shoot that's at this house. Wasn't Pimp C, he was like with a Mercedes? And like, yeah, he had just got the car. Gloria Velez or something, or something that yeah, looked he, like he, her? He, they put him in the scene, him and Gloria standing okay, by the car, yeah. but I literally, we were in Atlanta, and this big budget video's going down, and he's not there. So I literally, <laughs> he was proud of his new Mercedes, and I had just bought like this little Porsche, and I'm like, bro, let's just drive down to Miami. You got it, like, like the, the song had already been done, it was already moving around hot, and I'm like, you gotta do this, man, you gotta do this. Like literally, so I got him on the highway and we did like a little road trip. It's a nice little little ride from uh, 
like a nice little nine hours or something. I don't know. I fly yeah. from Atlanta to Miami, and we jumped on the highway and we drove down and we just we sh he shot the video. We hung out for about two weeks out there, and, and that was one of the best. That, that might be the best time we ever had. Yeah, like just h hanging out as homies. Yeah, yeah. I hung out with Pimp C a week before he died for the first time, first mm -hmm. and only time. Yeah, he was out here in L.A. Yeah, he was in L.A. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine, Rick Martin, was uh, managing him, and uh, that was a funny motherfucker, man. He, he, could take, he could take over the room. He could tell stories. No, he, no, he took over. Yeah, exactly. He he took over the room. No one said shit while well, uh, he told story after story. Pimp C, uh, like I I was not I was not wise to uh, how to like I still I still don't know how to dance around it. You know the whole click clickbait thing. How not to say shit that ends up in headlines. It's an art to it that I really haven't perfected. But Pimp C would have never went for it. He would have been he would have been the king of clickbait. He would have gave you so many <laughs> gems. Yeah, I was so supposed many. to. I was actually supposed to interview him, but he didn't have his haircut, so he wasn't <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> you know, it's really too bad. Um, when you got the phone call, when you got the phone call uh -huh. about Pim passing, uh, how bad did it hit you? Uh, well, his mother called me. I saw Pimp Saturday night. He came to the House of Blues. I did the show. I talked to him Sunday. We were going to do dinner. And neither one of us was, the timing wasn't right. And we like, let's just do it up tomorrow or something. And then no hear from on Monday. And his mama called me early Tuesday morning and said, asked me like, you know, seen him, you talk to him. I've been, she's like, she said, we talk every day. And I didn't talk to him yesterday. And now I haven't talked to him this morning. Mm -hmm. She's like, he's staying at such and such hotel. Get over there and go find out what the fuck happened. And I couldn't even get dressed fast enough when she called me back and said they found him in his room. So I, I just, I, to me, it's been 10 years and I'm like, it just, it, that's just one of those ones like somebody's really close to you and you don't get the answers you want. And you're like, well, like what the fuck happened? So to me, it's always been that what the fuck happened. And I was told something about a combination of sleep apnea and something, and he died in his sleep or something. I, that's what I was told. Yeah, I mean, Bun said that when he got locked up, he gained a lot of weight. Yeah. A lot of weight. Because he basically just sat around eating the whole time. You yeah. know, I mean, he wasn't He did come out of, out of jail big. Yeah, and, um, you know, between that and, and the lean use, you know, it was, it was a sad a sad situation because he was such a talent. Yeah, well, you know, that was my little brother, man, and uh, some people you don't want to let go. Uh, Tupac was hard to let go of. Biggie was hard to let go of, you know. We we just we just feel cheated, man. We feel like I needed more of that, you know? Like yeah. what was to come. Like like Pimp was just he was just really hitting that gear from being released from jail. He was Right. I mean, uh International Players Anthem was nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, yeah man. Uh it it was like he was popping, like you know exactly. what I mean? And he was making headlines with, with his shit talking and Yeah, but man. A man went out on top of the game, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know. R.I.P. to the pimp. That's, what, that's what we say.